theory. If you take a human resource book about how to deal with your employees, and you take a parenting book on how to deal with children, or you take a relationship book on how to deal with your significant other, and you switch all the pronouns around, you have the exact same book on just how to deal with people. So whether you're dealing with your staff, you're dealing with your children, your significant other or spouse, or other members of an organization, civic, religious organization that you belong to, like Toastmasters, the leadership qualities are all the same. They're all the same. So an effective leader has to know how to communicate. They have to know how to delegate. <coughs> they have to know how to inspire. And they have to be able to give feedback. Because feedback is a very important component of building and creating a successful team. It helps motivate people to bring them to the next level. It rewards people for performing. So, whether you're helping your sales team meet their sales target, whether you want to inspire your child to get good grades, whether you want to inspire your fellow Toastmaster to take it to the next level and compete, or whether you just want to get your spouse to pick up those dirty socks off the floor, you have to know how to get performance feedback. So how do you get feedback? It's easy to tell someone you're doing a really good job or you're doing a really bad job, but that's not feedback. That doesn't really help them. Use the opportunity to give feedback to help them to help them to inspire them, to help them gain confidence, and to help them achieve their goals. So let's talk about four steps that you can use to help you give effective feedback. Set clear. Objectives, clear and concise objectives. This is pretty low, sorry guys. Observe the individual's performance, give feedback immediately, and recognize positive performance. Set clear and concise goals, that is imperative. In order to know what your standards are, what you're being held to, you have to know what your goals are. As a, as a leader, you have to be able to set those goals and let the individual know exactly what is expected of them so they are clear. I had a client that drove me crazy. He would not give me the tools that I needed to do the job I needed to do, regardless of how often I asked. So when I gave him the packet, gave him the, the work that I did, his response was, I don't like it. What don't you like about it? The information I'm using is the information you gave me. What don't you like about it? He never gave me clear and concise goals, and his feedback just was non-existent. So make sure you give clear and concise goals. Observe the individual's performance. How do you know what they're doing unless you watch them? You have to be able to pay attention to see if they are performing the way you want them to perform, or whether they're, they need a little help and a little nudge. <clears throat> I told my daughter to clean her room the other day. And I left for about an hour, and I came back, and the room looked pretty clean. But since I didn't observe her, I didn't realize that all the dirty clothes were stuffed under her bed. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to observe the individual. Give feedback immediately. Not a week, not a day, not a month, but immediately. That's when it's the most effective. Because even though you may take notes, even though you may think you remember, chances are you're going to forget something. Pam, I loved your speech you gave in December. But you know that joke you told? I think it was a little off color. I don't quite remember what joke it was, but I do remember it was a little inappropriate. <laughs> She probably doesn't remember what, I'm what no, she I'm told either. <laughs> oh, you do? Oh, of course I do. Good. <laughs> of course you do. Recognize positive performance. Not just stellar performance or mediocre performance, but positive performance. In Toastmasters, we have a lot of speakers who are very, very good and get awards. 
but there are also a lot of speakers and Toastmasters, a lot of members who come weekly, who give great speeches, who participate in the meeting and perform to the expectations of a Toastmaster, but they might not be stellar performers. Yet the love notes that we give them give that positive feedback that helps them rise to the next level. So give positive feedback to everyone, not just the stellar or the poor performers. So giving feedback is easy whenever it's positive, whenever it's good. But sometimes it's difficult to give feedback when it's not so good. We tend to nag or complain, or especially in the case of the dirty socks, or we'll ignore it until it just blows up. So it's important to give feedback constructively whenever someone needs a little extra help. So I'd like to share with you some tips on giving constructive feedback, which is a little bit more difficult. This is very 1960s, isn't it? So some tips for giving constructive feedback. Can you see that? Be sincere. Be sincere. You need to make sure, be, I'm sorry, be specific. You have to be specific. You have to not be vague. You have to know, let them know exactly what it is that you are talking about that needs the performance to be improved. Fred, the presentation you gave was really good, but it could use a little oomph. Oomph? Oomph. <laughs> not very specific. How about, <laughs> how about this? The presentation you gave was great, but you might want to add PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> Good idea. Good idea. Huh? Speak for yourself. Try to avoid saying things like, well, everybody knows, or, you know, people are saying. Say things like, I noticed. I was, I was aware that you did this. So, speak for yourself. Don't speak for other people. And be sincere. Let them know how the actions make you feel. Stacy, when you don't clean up the kitchen, it really bothers me because it makes me feel like you want me to clean up the kitchen, and I find that disrespectful. So, that's an idea. Emphasize how the actions affect the team. A lot of people don't realize that what they do affects everybody. They may think sneaking in a little late, eh, no big deal. John? <laughs> when you're late, I feel like you really don't care that you're evaluating me today. <laughs> the rest of us have to wait until you get here to start the meeting. But, so I would appreciate it if you would be on time. Use the I word. Use things like I feel. I think this, not you, not, you're always late. How about, I would appreciate a phone call if you know you're going to be late. Saying the you word always puts the person on the defensive and that totally diminishes the effect of your positive feedback, of your performance feedback. And on a positive note, we all know the sandwiching technique, John's been great about teaching us that, where you start your feedback with a positive message and then you sandwich in the area that needs help, and then you end on a positive note again. That keeps the, that keeps the uh, discussion positive and uplifting. Recognize improvement. Make sure whenever you give feedback to someone, you tell them later, you did a good job. Or that was great, think about doing it this way next time, and it'll be even better. But recognize improvement. Let them know that you are paying attention. And then finally, remember to do this in private. Avoid the embarrassment, avoid humiliation. Make sure you give your performance feedback in private. So whether you are working with your child, like I said, whether you're trying to motivate your team members, whether you're trying to get the dirty socks off the floor, performance feedback is a very necessary component of leadership. And hopefully, 
The four steps I gave you and the eight tips I gave you to remember will help you give positive performance feedback in the future. Thank you.